Well, hello, YouTube. It's been a couple years since I made a video. Um, life gets in the way, what can I say? But I thought I would try to kickstart my channel again and bring out some new custom Hot Wheels videos for all my subscribers. So to kick things off, I thought it would be fun to customize this 56 Ford F100. More specifically, I'm going to give it the Spectraflame treatment. I enjoy collecting the old Spectraflame cars from the late 60s, and it's always fun to try to take a modern car and see if you can make it fit in with the old cars from back then. To begin, as with almost all the cars I make videos of, we start by taking the car apart. Tons of videos out there showing how this is done if you're not familiar with the process. When we get it apart, we'll want to start with the car body. Nothing really wrong with this paint job, but it needs to go. So we're going to remove it with automotive paint remover. This gets us down to the bare metal. So the first thing you may notice after you remove the paint on a Hot Wheels car is how much Mattel relies on paint to cover up the casting flaws. Here we can see an example of some flashing that needs to be removed from the hood and the fenders. All these flaws need to be removed unless you want them to show up in the final project. The Spectraflame paint is mostly transparent. Unlike the enamel that Mattel uses, it will not cover up gassing issues. To clean up these problems, I use small files that quickly remove the metal. The files are able to get into places a larger file could not. You do need to take care though as the files leave a rather rough surface that you will need to sand down, so use with caution. Once I'm done with the files, I use triple aught steel wool to remove any small burrs or small specks of paint that may have been left over. Then I inspect the car using a strong magnifying glass. The next step is going to take many hours, so it's important to be sure that the car is clean of any paint, as failure to do this will cause you to have to repeat the longest step. Once you're sure everything is clean, it's time to drop the body in the tumbler. This is a cheap vibrating tumbler. Inside are different media that will polish the car. The media includes simple polishing compounds, walnut holes, and large and small polishers. I bought all this from Harbor Freight if you're interested in getting your own. We're trying for a traditional Spectraflame look for this car. To achieve this, we must use a tumbler to get a uniform surface. Later I'll do another video where we'll do a more modern Spectraflame finish that does not use the tumbler. But for now, throw in the car and run it for at least 12 hours. While the car body is tumbling, we can move on to the interior. This is an all chrome interior and simply will not look right for what we're trying to achieve here. So what we're going to do is remove the chrome from the seats, but we need to protect the chrome on the engine. To do this, I use tape to cover up the engine. We're going to place the seats in acid to remove the chrome. The tape will keep the acid from also removing the chrome from the engine. I have another video that goes into greater detail on this if you're interested. For now, just place the seats in the acid and let it sit for several minutes. Remember to come back and check it on it occasionally and shake it around a little bit to get all the bubbles off. It shouldn't take more than 30 minutes to remove all the chrome. You can see here how mine turned out. I left a small amount of chrome on the dashboard to give it a metallic look. I believe these Ford F100s had metal dashes. By leaving a small amount, the dash will pop out of the window. The seats are now black. I wish they had been white plastic. Sometimes they use white plastic instead of black. But at this time, black is better than the chrome that was originally there. So through the magic of editing, 12 hours has passed and I've removed the body from the tumbler. As you can see, the body has a very uniform polish to it. For this type of Spectraflame look, we want this type of finish on the body. Be sure to wash all the polishing compounds off the body. I scrub mine with soap and a toothbrush. When you're done cleaning it, dry it, and then do not touch it with your hands as we don't want any of the oils from your hands on the surface of the car. Our next step is to paint the body. I chose to paint this car a Spectraflame Lime color, one of my favorite colors. I bought these paints from redlineshop.com. They have all the colors if you want to try this out. Okay, let's get to painting. There's nothing all that special about painting a Spectraflame car. In fact, I find it very forgiving. The paints are urethane based and dry almost instantly on contact with the car body. Your first coat should be a quick tack coat. This is just to prep the surface. Wait a few minutes between coats 
and then be prepared for how many coats we're going to be putting on. Expect about 15 coats. Yeah, that's the only drawback. It takes forever to build up a color. I'm not going to force you to watch all these coats going on, so we'll skip to the last coat I did. As you start adding coats, you'll notice that you can put them on more and more heavier. And as strange as it sounds, you start painting wondering if anything's happening at all, and then the color will just pop out during one of the coats. At that point, you can choose to keep adding and darkening the paint, or you can quit and leave it a lighter tone. I wanted to go a bit darker for this particular custom. By the way, I'm also using the hardener for these paints. You can read more about that on redlightandshop.com if you're interested. Once you're done painting, allow the paint to cure overnight and clean your airbrush with lacquer thinner. I should also mention that urethane paint is not safe to breathe. Make sure you paint this in a well ventilated area or wear a mask rated to remove urethane paint. So here's how the body turned out after it dried. Before I put the car back together, I'm going to make a couple small additions. First I hit the body with a lacquer clear coat. Then, using some silver and red paint, highlight the grill, door handles, and the rear brake lights. As a final change, I'm going to go ahead and switch its original wheels out with real riders. Personally, I really like the way it turned out. Please let me know what you think. Before I go, I wish to apologize for the poor video and sound quality of this particular video. A new camera and mic are on the way. So until next time, thanks for watching.